Welcome to Watch Me Code Q&A. So I was talking with some people in the Watch Me Code Slack recently, and there was a question about some error stuff. The, the question had to do basically with creating custom errors with uh, status and having that error you know, be able to be passed around, but also have a simple, easy API to create that particular error object. So I whipped up this sample code that I'm showing you right here on the screen, and I want to show you what happens when I paste this into uh, my text editor here and go run this from Node. So if I say Node index.js, we can see that it actually is throwing the error like I expect it to because, you know, I'm throwing the error. But the problem that we're going to run into with this code is not in the error itself, but in the stack trace that is created with this error. If you look at the stack trace that's coming out of the throw, we see that the first line in the stack trace is inside of the create error function at line two. Now this is where the actual error object is being created. And this tends to cause some problems in JavaScript when you want to have a custom error object or a wrapper around creating an error object with custom attributes, but have a good clean stack trace that you can use without seeing the line of code from that wrapper or the factory or whatever it is that you want to call it. Now, fortunately, there is a way to work around this in Node. There's this wonderful little method called error.captureStackTrace. And what you do is you pass in whatever error object you want into this method at this point in time. Now, if I run this at this point, it's not really going to show anything any different. You're still going to see that the error is giving us the create error inside of the stack trace. But there's a second parameter that this capture stack trace can take, and that is a function in JavaScript. And what happens when you pass in this function, some function, any function that you want, is the stack trace will exclude all stack frames up to and including this particular function. So in the case of my create error function, I could actually pass in the create error function as the parameter to this capture stack trace. And when I do that, I end up erasing create error from the stack trace that is produced on my error object. So now when I run this again, we see that I'm still throwing my test error, but I no longer have this create error line inside of my stack trace. The first line that I see is error on index.js line eight, and line eight is actually where I am creating the error. And this is exactly what we want to see inside of our custom errors and error factories inside of Node.js. So the next time you need to create a custom error or create a factory, a wrapper method, or something to give you a custom error message or an error message that has a lot of details already stuck inside of it, be sure to use this capture stack trace method inside of Node and make sure you're using the second parameter to tell the stack trace where you want it to be scrubbed clean from. This is incredibly powerful and it makes for some super duper clean stack traces inside your Node.js code. Unfortunately though, this is only available in Node.js. You're not gonna be able to do this inside of your browser-based apps because browsers don't have this error.capture stack trace. But be sure to check out the documentation for this. If I do some quick searching on Node.js error.capture stack trace, I'll pull up the documentation real quick and you can read a little bit more about and you can read a little bit more about this at error.capturestacktrace. It'll show you some of the arguments and some better description of this. There's also a few good blog posts out there. Uh, one in particular, this bennadel.com is a really good article. He goes into a lot more detail, has another screencast on there, and shows you a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with the capture stack trace and creating some custom error messages. So thanks for watching this quick episode of Watch Me Code Q&A. Be sure to check out the Watch Me Code website. And if you're interested in that Slack channel that I showed previously to discuss all things JavaScript and Node.js, sign up for Watch Me Code and join the community today. Thanks for watching and happy JavaScripting.